And so first I want to talk about uh, from looking through the lens of a Messianic Jew, which I myself am also a Messianic Jew. So I'm going to always kind of present a perspective that is in favor of not only expressing my Jewishness as a Jewish believer, but also a, a, an opinion that bleeds over into expressing my um, Torah obedience as a, a Christian. And I believe that that uh, carries over into what Christians can do. So first I want to look at Dr. Stern's um, book here. And look at some just some details in chapter two under um, uh, what I say it's uh, uh, chapter two identity Gentile Christian opposition. Here's some uh, vel relevant information that I found um, important as I'm studying through this particular topic about Judaism v Christianity, the relevance of Torah observance not just for Jews but for Gentiles, uh, oppositions to this idea, um, bringing in Messianic Judaism alongside of Christianity. How where does it fit in? Um, what what can we expect if Jewish people are to embrace Jesus and continue to uh, embrace Torah as well? What would that look like? So these are some of the topics we're going to talk about in this next 30 minutes. Uh, Dr. Stern says, quote, some churches try to assimilate us. He's speaking as a Messianic Jew. They try to assimilate us to Gentile ways, denying our right to express our Jewishness. And this is done often under the banner of eliminating, quote unquote, the middle wall of partition, end quote, between Jews and Gentiles, which has been broken down by Yeshua the Messiah. As I interject, it is true that the middle wall has been broken down, right? I even have a whole little video on it. Maybe I'll flash a little... Um, thumbnail and show you the video and then a link in the upper right corner of, of the YouTube, but it's available on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't believe that the middle wall that uh, Paul is talking about in the book of um, Ephesians is um, the Torah, right? The Torah was never designed to be a middle wall of partition between one um, culturally expressive segment of Christianity and another, right? In other words, between the Jew Messianic Jews and the uh, Gentile Christians. The, the Torah was never designed to separate peoples. In, in fact, it's the opposite. The Torah is a, a document that's meant to unify everyone under the banner of the one true God of Israel, which um, explains who the one true Messiah of Israel is, which of course is the God of all Jews and Gentiles and the Messiah of all Jews and Gentiles. So the Torah is that covenant document that uh, outlines the stipulations of God's people, explains how to lead, lead and live holy lives. It um, defines not only sin, but it also defines holiness. And of course, if sin and holiness are universal to God and God's people as the Jews, then it only stands to reason deductively that the same standard should apply uh, to Gentile Christians. Of course, we're going to look at some pushbacks to that notion. Dr. Stern continues, he says, other churches regard us, speaking of us messing the Jews, they regard us as extra special, either as weird, not quite Christians, or super Christians, doubly blessed. And I pulled this quote into my study. In the latter case, when we talk about doubly blessed, we're put on display. We are requested to give our testimony every other week, and any question about the Old Testament is immediately referred to our Jewish Christian. In short, he says we become the church's token Jew, right? We become, uh, um, our Jewishness becomes a cause celebre, and more to the point here, it gets defined not by ourselves, but by Gentiles around us. So um, this these are some of the um, kind of, um, uh, you might call um, anxieties that we Messianic Jews go through. Obviously, historic Christians don't perhaps identify with that, but I wanted you to understand that we Messianic Jews experience these things sometimes as we attend churches, or we don't experience it so much as we attend a Messianic uh, flavored congregation, but we certainly go through when we experience, um, uh, not all the time, and not all Jews do, by the way, and Dr. Stern's not trying to say that everyone experiences that, but some of us do, um, and so it's helpful to understand where we, uh, where, where we're kind of uh, it's kind of wiggling in the seat and, and as to why. Some in the church argue that Messianic Judaism is wrong. Um, you've probably heard this fairly predominantly in many Christian circles. Uh, here are six reasons that Dr. Stern has heard. And so we've got these A through F. He says, uh, point A, separatism, rebuilding the middle wall of partition. Again, many historic Christians believe that to bring in a Torah observance alongside of your faith in Jesus raises that middle wall of partition, which means for them, um, Jewish expressions of Christianity or Torah observant lifestyle or those that are leaning towards Hebraic lifestyle is an unnecessary step backwards in the wrong direction. And it's an unnecessary wall of partition because 
it's largely understood and even kind of agreed upon that most people in Gentile and historic Gentile Christianity are not really interested in keeping the lifestyle that looks on the outward, uh, looks on the outside like a, a, some form of Judaism. And what I mean by that are the visible, what we might call badges of Christian of Judaism that have kind of um, carried been carried along all through the centuries of Jewish history. So we've got some of the things like, say, um, male circumcision for infants, infant circumcision, or even adult circumcision, but male circumcision, that's one of the badges of Judaism. Uh, badges are meant to, by the way, I'm using that analogy, because a badge, when you look at a uniform or an, an outfit, a badge is something that's worn on the out, outside of the uniform or the outfit article of clothing, and it's meant to identify kind of that person um, along with a group or an ideal or a concept or even a position, right? A, a, a police wears a uniform and he's got a badge of authority that says he's in a position to kind of exercise this function and role in society. We're not trying to say that the Messianic Jews are, are, are religious police or something to that effect when I use the word badge. I'm just trying to say it's, it's a visible symbol that can be seen on the outside by everyone around, both in the community and outside of the community. They instantly see the badge and they, they're meant to understand either some of its unique uh, roles and functions or um, it kind of marks the person out as belonging to a group. At, at the very least, that's what it does. So um, many within Gentile Christian, historic Gentile interpretations of the Ephesians passage where Paul talks about the middle wall, interpret that middle wall of separation as the Torah. I, again, I disagree, but they believe that that is the middle wall that is being uh, reconstructed um, by Christians and Gentile Jews, who uh, not Jews, but Gentiles. Uh, let's try that one again. They believe that anyone who kind of champions a Torah observant lifestyle, such as Messianic Jews like myself or Gentile Christians who are embracing the Hebraic lifestyle, um, they believe that's the middle wall of partition that Paul told us has been broken down. Just FYI, what do I think the middle wall of perdition is? I think it was the vile man-made um, uh, dogmas and man-made laws and halachas, uh, halachut, um, uh, policies, uh, group policies that were entrenched in place by Yeshua's day that were kind of erected by the historic Jewish people to keep Gentiles outside of their local groups, keep them at arm's length, and... Um, it was a misuse of Torah, kind of a nationalization of Torah, a restricted view of the Torah of God uh, for Jews only in that respect. And so when Jesus came, he came to explain that, no, the middle wall of covenant membership is not restricted to Jewish only people. God is not the God of the Jews only, what Paul would go on to say in Romans chapter 2. I'm sorry, Romans chapter 3, near the very end of the chapter there. Um, God, is he the God of the Jews only? No, he's the God of Jews and Gentiles. As we agree, heroes are the Lord, our God, the Lord, we Jews and Gentiles. The Lord, our God is one God of Jews and Gentiles. If I can uh, give my kind of a different spin on the, on the uh, Shema. 